θα είναι ο μέρα τη ψυχή που θα κερδίσει το πρώτο λαχείο. Father is making a very strong appeal to us about the presence of the monasteries in our midst and what a great blessing it is for us in the Diocese of Pittsburgh to have the monastery here. He calls it a light for all of us. <clears throat> Every monastery is like a fortress. Uh, it's the presence of the Holy Fathers. It blesses us everywhere and it blesses all things. It brings us peace. Because of the presence of the monastery, the angels come to be with us. It helps Christians in their walk. It's a spiritual haven. It consoles us. It gives us life. Uh, and especially in these days that we have such a great need for spiritual help, the monastery is there as a source of hope for all of us. From it we receive strength, grace. We have the experience of the church that is incarnated in the life of the monastery. It's something there to help us and to bring us salvation. And especially significant in Father's mind is the fact that this monastery is in the New World, in America. It's not a small thing that we have finally planted an Athenite monastery right here in our own midst, in our own backyard, as it were. Um, and this gives a great deal of hope. Um, and he tells us that we must support it with our prayers, with our love, because this will be a yeast for other monasteries to take them a foothold in this country. Um, it's a place where we will go to be fed, a place where we will go to um, drink for, for our thirsty souls, and a place where we will find salvation. Now he goes to another thought with regard to the presence of the monasteries, and he's telling us that we are now waiting for the Antichrist. And who is the Antichrist, he says? Who is this Antichrist? And he quotes the letter of John, Anyone who does not confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, he is the Antichrist. And, you know, the Lord must be worshipped in both spirit and truth. And today we are living in a time when there are many, many Antichrists in our midst. There are many who do not believe in Christ. And these are the Antichrists of the time. Father has a, his own personal and humble opinion that the center for this kind of uh, demonic antichrist activity would be a place like New York, which is a center for television. And through this, the devil will be able to communicate with us. He will be able to reach us through the mass media. And at a certain time, through the television, he can reach every person in our country or even in the world. And he will be able to, to give directions and, and uh, he will be able to pull us in with him through this tool that could be used. He speaks about so many Satanists today who are in our midst. And obviously, therefore, in order to counteract all this evil activity, which is multiplying in our times, we need these monasteries. The monasteries produce our soldiers, and these soldiers are our monks and our nuns, and the monasteries are the forts from which we do battle against these evil influences that are surrounding us. He talks about the fact that while the uh, activity of the Antichrist is on the increase, when the Lord returns, the question is asked, will he find faith? Obviously, the Lord, when he said that, knew that it would be a very difficult time in the end. Uh, and therefore, we have an immediate need for these monasteries. Uh, all the prophecies of the Bible speak about the tremendous difficulty of the times, the end times. And those prophecies were given by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And Father Ephraim goes on to say the fact is that in the latter days, it will be even more difficult than it was in the earliest days of Christianity, because in the latter days, we will need what he calls the new martyrs. And the new martyrs will surpass even the old martyrs. They will be brighter than the sun, because it will be so difficult in the latter days to find even one person that has faith, one spiritual individual. And for that reason, we have to be all the more uh, aware of the fact how difficult it will be in the past People were brought into the faith through the miracles that occurred. But today we don't see the miracles that we saw in the time of Jesus to the degree that we saw them then, because faith has uh, diminished so much. Therefore, it will be very rare to find such a person. And who will those martyrs be? Just those who confess Christ, who stand their ground, who are witnesses for their faith. They will be even greater than the martyrs of old these new martyrs, because the times will be so difficult. 
In the earlier age, yes, it was difficult, but there were still many things that were happening and there were many uh, spiritual uh, uh, strengths of the church that were being manifested. But in the latter days, this will not be so much. People will be pulled more and more towards evil in the end. And therefore, one strong person in the faith will be even a greater martyr, anyone who confesses Christ. And uh, so he finishes with that note as a very strong, uh, shall we say, uh, injunction to all of us that we would support the monasteries, try to encourage their development, uh, their spreading throughout this new world so that the forts of the Lord, the, the soldiers of Christ, can be spread all over this land. And now that he has finished with his remarks, uh, we want to thank him also again for the blessing of coming to visit us here at Holy Cross. And uh, we uh, hope that some of you may perhaps be able to join us at our retreat in Saxonburg on Saturday. We will have a liturgy there in the morning where those that are driving up from Holy Cross will be meeting here at the church at 8 a.m., driving up for the liturgy. And then we'll spend the day in a fellowship up there talking about some of these things. Possibly Father might be present, we're not sure, but if he is, certainly hopefully we'll impose upon him again to speak to us a little bit about some of the things that uh, he has to share with us. So we thank him again. He will be leaving very quickly now. He won't be able to stay for the coffee hour because uh, he keeps a very tight schedule and his discipline of prayer and, and spiritual uh, focus is such that when it's time to leave, he goes. <laughs> <laughs> Father, he has one closing remark about the fact that it is a tremendous blessing for us in our area to be the first monastery in the New World. We should glorify God for this, to have the Nathanite Monastery to be the first one from Monathos with the connection with Monathos to be here in the New World. And he owes all of this, uh, he feels, to the, um, the God-inspired uh, ministry of our beloved Bishop Maximus, a man of God who does what he believes. And we owe him a very special honor for the fact that he has been a lover of a monastic life. He asks us to pray for him so that he may continue to be able to plant more monastic, monastic communities in our area. And he hopes that the state of Pennsylvania will become the capital of monasticism in the new world. Υπέρα υγεία, Θεοτόκιο, υπέρα υγεία. Τι μνήμη μας στο Θεό.